Good morning guys, it's James here from Sunseeker Southampton. Welcome to day six here at the Sunseeker stand at Southampton International Boat Show. So today we're going to have a look around one of the recently launched Sunseeker 88 yachts. This is boat 503, which is the second one in the range, and this boat is actually currently available. So we kept her back ready for the show display here at the Southampton show. I hope you enjoyed the tour today with me having a look around. So obviously covered one of these fairly recently, which I did actually shoot some months ago. So it's nice to get back on board, see one that's been done slightly differently, different interior finishes and what have you. You see the beautiful profile shot here walking down the pontoon alongside her. So revision on what was the hugely successful 86 yacht before her, with this new window line running through the bulwark. So we've removed the option now for the dropout balcony on the starboard side and elected to go instead with this beautiful cutaway glass section here. This particular boat finished in a raw white gel coat here, signature black boot top stripe there just above the waterline, and then we've got a gloss painted hard top. So powered by the larger engines, which is the 1950 horsepower 12V MTUs, Standard boat running 1622 horsepower. So you've the option for either. Absolutely wonderful. Built several 86 yachts, working on some exciting 88 projects at the moment. So on the stern here, upgraded platform on this particular yacht, 1,000 kilo lift, which will take a 900 kilo tender. So 460 Williams, quite happily sits on the back there. We've elected to go for fixed rails on this particular build, but there is the option up top there if you wished to have a removable railing system and a jet ski, crane, etc. We'll have a look at that in a little bit more detail when we get up on board. So just stepping on, see the cleaning team are doing a wonderful job through the week here. Just gonna leave them to, to finish off from the back here, but you'll see a much acclaimed extend system which we're running on a number of the new builds launched this year, where we've got this sort of mini storage come garage area, pop-up seat. On the underside of this lid, there's a shower and some lighting. And the whole seat arrangement here is currently up in the cockpit position. This drops down onto the bathing platform and then we have this giant sunbed come seat when you're at anchor. Crew space and engine rooms down the back here, we'll do that in a bit. Let's head up into the cockpit. Have a look around. So we're moving big push at the moment to Loose furniture, as you can see here, set up for the sofas, works very nicely with that aft extend system. We can, of course, do fixed seat boxes in here on the sides. We can do a return on there this way around. A uh, fixed dining table, very much personal choice at this size to get what you want as an end user. So that drops back into the deck there and then down onto the aft transom area. When you're at sea, spinning round here, forward end of the cockpit, we've got the sink here, sort of small prep area, and then underneath the fridge. This is a big storage cupboard over underneath the stairs, and then for docking, we've got the option in here to put a third station in. We don't fit them a standard from the factory as they often get requests for full wireless remote control systems these days. So you can see from that third helm, the visibility running all the way from the bow up to the stern. So you can see why captains like to use the third station when coming into port. So let's start off inside. We'll have a look around the interior and then finish up top on the flybridge. So this particular boat finished in a lovely Contrast here with the silver oak and the eucalyptus in a satin high sheen finish. This particular one set up with all the sofa area here on the port side and the TV opposite. So we've got this lovely return on here, so it's a great social space, huge coffee table. There's some storage in the top, lifts up underneath all those lovely boat dressings. That's a 55 inch TV there up on the wall. We've got surround sound with the speakers up in the ceiling. Beautiful LED feature lighting here. Running throughout the boat. 
lots of carpet upgrades, fabric upholstery upgrades, um, worktop upgrades here coming forward on these sideboards. Around a year in build one of these from start to finish, so rare to see one finished, and certainly one that's available. So in this centre section we've got storage for crockery, we've got the illuminated glasses storage here. Dining table currently only got six seats round, you'd have typically another chair at either end of the table. And on this particular yacht, this is a fixed pane of glass here, you can see this beautiful carbon fibre weave here, so there's a lot of carbon used in the modern builds for strength, rigidity and also lightweight, allows us to have these huge opening sections where historically you would have had much smaller port lights and what have you. So this is an optional sliding door as this particular yacht has, so where we typically would have had a balcony out there, now you can enjoy that vista and still look through the, the glass panel in the bulwark there. Uh, coming forward, so this is glasses storage, lovely stone tops here. Upgrade on the porcelain there. It's a nice feature. Backlighting on the shelves. So the boat is still very much in the realms of owner operator or fully crewed. So forward here, we can shut this wall behind the helm. We've got another door over here to keep sort of prep and what have you up forward there. And then guest entertainment area back here. But if you're an owner running this, she's under 24 meter load line. You've still very much got the opportunity to bring the family together and don't feel like you're tucked away out of the action. So up forward here we've got the main lower helm. So two electric residence only chairs. You can sit here in the helm. You can see the eye line visibility of what I'm seeing as the captain. So we're running two 24 inch Simrad multifunction display, so we've got things like the structure scan for 3D fish finder capability, there's a 72 nautical mile radar up top, open array, uh, we've got a 10 inch CM8 display which is the monitoring panel here for Sunseekers electronic onboard systems, controls for generators and what have you, so we've got 35 and 27 kilowatt generators, uh, MTU display for the engines, this is the CMC stabiliser panel running the zero speed fin stabilizers and then we've got some handy things like control here which is like a, a mouse for a computer rather than having to reach forward they are fully touch screen those displays but just if you're underway saves the captain having to leave the chair uh, so this is MTU's docking system again in that sort of realms of owner operator it does give you the option if you're not quite so comfortable with throttle and thruster controls it's bringing everything together here so pushing the joystick over is giving us hydraulic proportional thrust, twisting the top is engaging engines and gearboxes. We've got things like air conditioning panels here, various lighting systems. It's all nicely to hand, you can imagine spending a serious amount of time on board here. The boat has a range between 12 and 1500 nautical miles at a fast displacement speed, which is generally how these are run these days, about 12 knots I would say is the typical cruising speed. back and do the galley bit. Of course here we've got a day head up on main deck, so of course everybody then has their own private cabins downstairs. So single stairwell, this is where the biggest change over the 86 is that would have historically had a stairwell in through forward for the VIP guest. Change the layout now to bring the cabins together. Lovely LED feature lighting here as we come down, maybe playing slight havoc in the camera frames here. And we've got four guest cabins below. So we start midships, currently configured as a double bed. There's actually a split through the middle here and the tracks in the floor there, you'll see electronically this bed can slide across and that then gives you the ability if you're running as a charter boat or if you've got two families with two sets of kids, you've got different solutions in here. We can do a drop down single, what we call a Pullman berth in here, which would give you an additional two berths on the boat to bring it up to 10 if required. Lovely big picture. Windows there and opening port lights. You can see 
see these beautiful leather inlays on the, on the handles. Stiff magnets there on the doors, as she's obviously brand new. En suite tech down behind. Again, with some very clever use of light. Really, really have done the finish on this one very nicely. Spec by one of my colleagues at Sunseeker London. Stick AV up on the wall there. So across here, this is much the same design. This one obviously laid out with the twins, so you can see how that works slightly differently. And again, we can do that Pullman berth up on the wall if required. I love things like these wall lamps, really, really detailed. Somewhere very special for a guest to come for the first time. They haven't been on board before, as owners often enjoy entertaining their friends who are perhaps not quite so lucky to have their own boats like this. So again, huge showers, big soaker shower up in the ceiling there. Some lovely veining on the stone. See the thickness of these doors, absolutely. Awesome, we've got um, acoustic foam around all the doors, so it's very quiet walking through the boat. So we referred upstairs earlier to the access to the guest cabin forward, and this is the new layout. So you will have seen this on the other tour that I covered not that long ago. And it gives you this huge second VIP suite, arguably I would say almost as nice as the main owner suite midships. So his and hers bathrooms, we've got a giant shower compartment there and a loose tuck down behind the wall there. And across on the other side we've got a little vanity station. All beautifully inlaid with leather, soft clothes. This is a, a high lacquer gunmetal silver paint on there. So we've got all sorts of storage here. These are used often for extended time on board. So plenty of space for height hanging, which is important for certain clients. And then forward into the bedroom itself. Very light and airy in here. And you notice how quiet often the complaint in the forward cabin is the noise of the water slapping on the hull. You hear a little bit of that in here but such is the level of sound insulation we can put in these days. Turn it into a very nice space to spend some time on board. See a huge 55 inch telly up on the bulkhead there. Very much finished to a, a personal taste, so if you didn't like the finish on here, we could do something very much bespoke. We're into 20, 23 season now for an open spec build of one of these. You can see the exquisite detail all around the bed frames, the lighting again up in the ceiling here. Fantastic. So we head back round, like a little maze down here, so much space. Got this very funky patterning on the on the bulkheads here, probably looking a little bit funny in your camera screens, but it's a sort of jigsaw pattern, works really nicely. So we've got things like laundry space. Again, trying to keep everything close to the guest cabin so that if you've got a, a stew doing bed makeup, everything's nice and close to putting the cabins back together every day. So we're now midships and we're into the master stateroom itself. And this really is a wow in here. Absolutely awesome, awesome colours and designs. So these beautiful new handles you saw on the other tour I did recently. Not quite the same looking out into Southampton docks here. It's down on the French Riviera or the Italian Amalfi Coast. But nevertheless, loads of natural light coming in. Still fairly grim day here, hasn't got the sun out just yet. Yet still very, very bright and airy. Again, lovely feature, LED lights here through the ceiling. Again, 55 inch TV up on the wall here. You can see this Clever bulkhead finish. Just something a little different to the fabrics and whatever you may have seen that we use generally on yachts such as this. 
So we've got lots of storage, there's options to put little drinks fridges and what have you in. Again, clever use of some, some lacquer in here. And then a sort of dressing area here, so with a starboard off quarter now. So if you keep the boat down in the south of France, you can travel light. Plenty of space to leave a lot of belongings on board. And then running thwart ships here, we've got this beautiful white stone with the bathroom running beam to beam. So we've got the big shower there, the huge soaker up in the roof there. Uh, there's space to put a bidet in here or a combi unit for certain parts of the world. Again, a lovely feature LED there in the mirror. Come back up, we'll have a look in the galley. They're just finishing off the cleaning for the day, so not to disturb them. We can have a look in one of the other videos I did recently to see how this all works, but we've got under counter refrigeration here wine cooler, big drawers for storage, dishwashers in here, oven, microwave, 43 inch TV up on the wall there, lots of prep area. We've done away with the observation seating that we used to have on the previous 86 yacht. On the basis, to be honest, most of the time if the crew are off watch, they'll be down in the mess aft, or being, say, still very much an owner-operated proposition, they may well be but the owner doesn't want to give away that space as, um, as somewhere they don't really use on the yacht. So heading up the flybridge stairs here. Let's take a look at the top deck. So you come up, you notice straight into the bar area as if you were running crude boat. You've then got the option for easy access to things like the sink here. Barbecue, we can do a larger grill in here if you if you wish, although the standard unit is pretty good. And then as you'd expect in a wet bar, we've got things like your ice maker, refrigeration drawers, what have you. Uh, this particular one finished in this lovely sprayed silver lacquer. We've done a lot of work on our bar configurations over the last 12 months. Seen on the new Ocean 90, what have you, this lovely, again, stainless steel inlays, and we've got the feature LED lighting that really makes the boat special at night time. So three fixed stools, obviously you can remove those if you prefer to have this as a big open deck. Coming here back onto the aft deck itself. This one currently in an open configuration. So we've got a fixed sunbed here over on the starboard side. There's storage underneath this one and a big aft deck where there's space to put some, some Summit Teak sun lounges, which make it very easy to turn this into maybe a you know, dance floor type setup. You see them down at the Monaco Grand Prix and what have you. So various configurations we could do up here. So the option we've drawn it but not yet built one with removable rails and we could have a jet ski or even two jet skis and a crane up here. Or well, there is also the option to go with a fixed jacuzzi set. You'll notice if you watch my recent 28 meter refit series, you can actually do a full beam um, hot tub with sun pad arrangement up top here or we could do a small hot tub here over on the starboard side underneath this pad and keep the deck free or even the option with a small tub and a jet ski. So there's quite a few different options depending on what an owner wants to achieve. So you can see up top there, they've painted all of the radar arch and navigation equipment, which does actually, fortunately, it invalidates the warranty on the nav kit, but it does look beautiful very much a personal owner's choice. And then on the back here, this is a pull-out electric sun awning to protect the aft deck on the hotter days. So we come forward, we've got the seating area here. These, of course, are opening leaves, so we can turn this into more of a coffee table style feel when required. And then helm on the starboard. 
So this is two 16 inch NSS Evo 3 displays there, much the same as you've seen downstairs. Everything is mirror, mirror image. So we've got the joystick system, thruster controls, and you can see here, slight overhang on the aft combing here, so you can't quite see the stern down the side, but if you stick your head out, see enough. Um, I often put wing cameras out on the sides here for those that do want to, to helm themselves, make docking a little bit more straightforward. And you see this little pop-up screen here to stop the wind buffeting you when you're out open sea. Obviously lovely seating opposite, so it's a very social space, whether that's owner operator or chatting away to your captain. Tend to find on yachts of this size if you are running crew, it's a very close relationship. Perhaps less so when you go over that 24 metre load line where the crew are living away from the guests on the boat all the time. At this size, tend to integrate with the crew to a certain degree. And we'll head up on the bow in a sec. So you can have a look around that. You can just see there seating and sun pad from a top down angle. see the depth of these bulwarks. If I duck down here, you can see vast, solid fiberglass structure and then the rails along the top. So this is right up at my waist height, so it feels very little ship-esque as you walk down the deck here. So you see those lovely glass windows and the door here that went through into the dining area. This is a crew door here into the bridge area and then you've got a further door around on the starboard side which does the galley access if the crew are coming on with provisions. So you've got seating of course there, centre line, option for a couple of parasols up here, deck lockers here up top for warp storage and a centre line sunbed, these are lift up, backrests on here and a handy little seat in front. So we've got two Lumar V8 anchors there this particular one finished with galvanised anchors. If you're feeling extravagant, easy to change those up to stainless steel. So we'll head back down to the cockpit. We'll finish off in the crew cabin and the engine room. My shoes back on as that deck's looking a little bit damp down there still. So off the bathing platform here, find the little button underneath. A little bit tricky to do with one hand. So it lifts up from the top, obviously, so it doesn't disturb the tender in situ. And we come down into what is a very high traffic working area. So it's all very practical down here with hard surface cupboards and wet room type floors and we've got four crew beds here. Those of you watching below deck and what have you, you'll see the sort of space usually set up here for a crew of four on board. So generally captain, hostess, deckhand and chef at this size with everybody performing shared roles in a number of those different positions to keep life on board running as smoothly as it can. And they've got a mess area down here, generally chef also cooking for them up on the main deck, outside of the guest hours. Uh, there's an upgrade with things like the CM8 and the Simrad 12 inch plotter on the wall there. And you've got the full laundry facilities. Then we come forward to the engine room. So these are full of bits and pieces at the moment, it's obviously we're in boat show mode, so people aren't encouraged to come in here. But we're on 12V engines here, so we're a V-drive configuration, the gearboxes sit actually forward of the engines, so we'll just clamber in here. And all the bits and talk you through, so what's what? Atlas shore power converter system here, just stabilising the power for perhaps less reliable areas of operation. 
the yacht might be used. You see all the heat bagging on the giant exhaust systems here. They're sequential turbos, you can see them tucked across the top here, so the engines get up and boost very quickly. They're very impressive, these, actually, to see them go from a standing start up onto a fully planing. Very little time at all. You can see exquisitely finished on all the pipe work. Everything's beautifully finished. You can see the generator sitting outboard of the engines there, charging and extraction systems. This is a water maker here up on the shelf over the port engine and the starboard this is an optional storage cage you can see how that gets used for engine spares and, and bits and pieces we've got a water softener system on this one uh, she's got a pressure wash anchor chain cleaning system very very high spec indeed see the fire suppression tucked over there starboard side uh, these are the deck parasols we talked about earlier Boat's literally fresh out from the factory. Bar a PDI, she could be ready for delivery in a couple of weeks' time. There you have it. Hope you've enjoyed that one with us today. So I say this boat is actually available and the show is running for another four days. So if you'd like the opportunity to come down and check her out in her full glory, please do get in touch directly. Priced as you see her here, she's just over 6.3 million pounds XVAT. So fully loaded other than safety kit, tender, backlit name and a few other minor bits and pieces. There's very little needed to get her out on the water, ready for the 22 season and beyond. So as always, contact details, it's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or mobile is plus 44 686 587. Hope you've enjoyed being on board with us today and join us again soon for another one here on the stand.